ask for a link. I was on my way to go and have a look at that beautiful old gentleman in the back, but I got completely distracted by a pair of buffalo bulls, one of whom has just had the best time of his day. He climbed fully into a mud wallow. The guy on the left, you can, I mean, I don't think I really need to explain that to you. You can see how muddy he is. And he rolled right over, rubbed his back, legs in the air. It was just such a joyful moment from an animal that otherwise, I wouldn't say, really comes packed with that much joy in their, in their lives. But he really, really enjoyed that mud bath. And as temperatures heat up, It'll help to get rid of all of the ticks that are clinging onto his skin and help to keep him cool at the same time. Look at that. He's completely covered. The only part of him he didn't reach was a bit of his cheek and his ear. The rest of him is drenched in thick, dark mud. Was that nice, boy? I tried to get a little bit closer, but he wasn't having any of it. And now he's wandering off with his friend to go and find some shade. I'm going to keep driving so you won't see my head for the moment. I'm just going to drive a little bit closer to that magnificent elephant that we have in the background with a really impressive long pair of tusks. David, in Napa, you would like to know how much bigger elephants are when compared to buffalo. Much, um, which is a pretty trite answer. A big buffalo bull could easily be, I would almost say, yeah, let's say five, six, seven times the size of a big buffalo bull. And I mean, in certain record-breaking situations, there were elephants recorded as being over 10 tons in weight. And a buffalo very seldom will top the ton scale. In fact, I think the most you're looking at is around about 900 kilograms. So they really are much, much larger. They're much taller. Hello, old boy. Do you mind if we get closer? Oh, look at you. It's the same gentleman I saw last night. I really wanted to show it to you on my way home from the lions, but as you know, None of that went according to plan yesterday. It is the same one. He's got a collection of lumps and bumps and growths on his skin. Oh, goodness. Forgot I was still attached to my phone. Oh, of course, now, now that we want to see his face, he's turned his head away. So it's difficult to gauge exactly how old he is. I think he's still relatively young. I'd put him over 30. I still think he's got some growing to do, and I think that's going to be a very, very impressive elephant in the next 20 years. All that wisdom and experience. You might, I've noticed that we see the same elephants regularly out as we move down from camp down the mountain and sort of on, onto the open area of the, the Mara Triangle. So hopefully we'll get to know a few of them in the same way that we do the elephants back on Juma. You can see he's got a nice little circle out of his ear flap there. There you go. That's very distinctive. That will never heal. So we'll always be able to identify that. And welcome to James on this sunrise safari. I hope you've been having fun between South Africa and Kenya. You want to know how do you know if an elephant is stressed? There's a couple of very important signs to look at, one of which Dave is just about to show you, which is the tail. And a swinging, contented tail like that tells you that the elephant is perfectly relaxed. When an elephant's tail is stiff and held out at 90 degrees to its body, or even just still for a long period of time, that elephant is not particularly happy. Another way that you can tell is if they have their heads up and their ears out. That's not necessarily aggressive or stressed, but it does mean that they're observing you. And from there, you have to plan out your behavior so that you don't upset them in any way. For example, by turning on the car and revving or something like that, making a lot of noise. If an elephant is going to charge you, they might give you a few head shakes of warning. Again, then it's better to sit where you are. 
And then a really serious charge will be ears tucked back and trunk up and running full speed towards you. A lot of the time an elephant will come, if it is, we call it a mock charge, that's not correct, a warning charge, because there's nothing mocking about it, there's nothing funny about it. And they're just warning you. But a lot of the time they'll do that when they're not too serious. They'll make a lot of noise. They'll have their head out and their ears up and they'll be trumpeting away. And then another sign is to look at their temporal glands, which of course now we've got a perfect view of his bottom and definitely not his temples. But they do have glands between their eyes and their ears that secrete a pheromone type substance when they are stressed out. Particularly you'll see it with females when they've been chased around by a male or something's upset them or they've seen lions or predators. They stream copious amounts of liquid from those glands. Hey, look at your hairy chin. Oh no, that's grass. Sorry. I thought, he'd be, I thought we had a really bearded elephant there. Isn't he beautiful? Look at him. Imagine the weight of having those hanging from the end of your face the whole time. Violet, I agree. I find elephants incredibly relaxing. And you know what? I think this gentleman is calm enough that we could even get a little bit closer. Although I think he might come to us. And maybe if we just sit tight... There's nothing like the feeling of being with an elephant. They inspire feelings of great contentment. And speaking of things that inspire great contentment, I believe that Byron is enjoying his morning coffee stop.